Hi everyone and welcome back to my channel. Welcome to another true crime and makeup video. Today we're going to be covering the case of Paris Bennett and this is a heavy case. It's not an easy one to hear. It definitely wasn't an easy one to research. It's such a tragic story. Now I first came across this case when I saw Paris Bennett do an interview with Piers Morgan. I think it was like a couple of years ago now and wow did he scare me. It is rare to come across someone as cold and as calculated as Paris it's truly terrifying and I really do believe that Paris is a true psychopath and just in case if I haven't made this clear he terrifies me. Paris scares the hell out of me and this is the first case that I've done where I'm actually scared that Paris may see this video one day. I'm not joking there really I'm scared and when I started properly researching this case for this video I've got to say even though Paris terrifies me he also fascinates me like it's just so rare to come across someone like Paris like the way his brain works it's it honestly is it's terrifying but it's fascinating at the same time so before we jump in I do need to give a disclaimer for this video because we do cover some very sensitive very heavy topics in this case there is child murder there is child sexual abuse there's also substance abuse so please be aware of this before watching this video so paris lee bennett was born on october 10th 1993 making him a libra which as soon as i found that out i was like oh my god because i'm a libra and he's got such a similar birthday to me. He's such a similar age. And his mother is Charity Lee and she plays quite a big role in this story. And we do need to go into her background to kind of really understand like, the story. Now, Charity was born in Georgia to parents Bobby Bennett and Kyla Bennett. Now, Charity's dad owned a very successful trucking company and they were very financially well off. They had a lot of money. They lived on this very big fancy ranch. Like they were comfortable, more than comfortable. They had a lot of money. However, tragically, when Charity was just age six, her father was murdered. And following this, Charity didn't have a very stable upbringing. Her mother remarried seven or eight times. Charity has actually lost count, so we don't know. Seven or eight times. And Kyla was just a very cold, a very distant mother to Charity. Like nothing Charity did was ever good enough. However, despite all of this, Charity just got on with things and she was an extreme extremely high achiever in school. She even graduated early. However, later on in her teenage years, things did take a turn for the worse because she became addicted to heroin. And at the age of 17, Kyla, Charity's mom, kicked Charity out of the house. And Kyla gave Charity $100 when she kicked her out of the house. And she said, you can use this $100 to sort your life out, or you can use the $100 to buy more drugs and find a place to overdose. Wow, I mean, I know things must be challenging when you are dealing with a child or anybody that is struggling with substance abuse, but you don't go and tell someone to find somewhere to overdose. Charity ended up in a halfway house and she did manage to get clean. However, she slipped in a very deep depression and she just couldn't get out of it. She was really, really struggling and she made a deal with herself. She said that if she was still struggling in three months time, she would take an overdose. And it was somewhere in this three months that Charity did fall pregnant with Paris. Everything changed from here for Charity. This was the miracle that she needed. And Charity has said multiple times that Paris literally did save her life. So as you can imagine, when Paris was born, Charity was absolutely in love with him. She stayed clean, completely devoted her life to raising Paris. Paris's dad didn't stick around too long after Paris was born. So it was just Charity and Paris. Now Paris was just like any other young boy, but he was extremely talented and creative. And he had quite a few hobbies that he did excel at. He started drawing at the age of three and he still draws to this day and I've got to say I've seen his artwork and he is extremely gifted and Charity describes Paris as a pretty calm child nothing out of the ordinary and Paris not only being incredibly talented and creative he was also incredibly intelligent I mean literally a genius Paris has an IQ of 141 and this actually qualifies him as a genius. And just a side note, less than 1% of the world's population has that kind of level of intelligence. So yeah. And all of Paris's teachers would always say that Paris 
was the most intelligent student they had ever had. So yeah, Paris is a creative genius which uh, knowing what we know now is terrifying. So it was Charity and Paris for a very long time, just the two of them, and they had an amazing life. And then when Paris was aged eight, Charity did become pregnant. And Paris was not happy about this at all. Whenever the topic of Charity's pregnancy would come up, he would like leave the room. He was not happy about it. He would not interact with the belly or anything like that. He was so against the pregnancy. And I suppose that is not the most uncommon thing when it comes to like firstborn children with the second pregnancy. Obviously, as you can imagine, Charity was terrified about how Paris was going to react as soon as his sibling was born. However, when his sister Ella was born on the 12th of April 2002, everything completely changed. It was like a light switch. He instantly fell in love with his sister and he completely took on that older brother role and Ella and Paris became so close. Ella had a different father to Paris and he also left when Ella was quite young. So it was just Charity, Paris and Ella. Now Ella had a huge personality. She was bossy and opinionated and sassy, but she was just such a loving little girl. She was so caring and Ella absolutely adored her older brother Paris, just like Paris absolutely adored Ella. They would play together all the time. They were so, so close. I really need to stress, they were so close. Paris definitely wasn't that older brother that was like, oh, I'm too cool to hang around with my younger sister. No, it was the complete opposite. Paris would always make time to play with Ella. Paris even became like Ella's little fashion consultant because Paris would choose her outfits every single day. Literally everyone would always comment on how good of a brother Paris was to Ella. All three of them just seemed to have this perfect little life they all got on, they were all so close. However, things did not stay perfect forever. It was when Paris was 11 years old that Charity did relapse and Paris did not cope well with this at all. Charity had been working very, very hard to try and get her business off the ground and just the stress of trying to get her business started and all of the long nights pushed her into taking cocaine and she was using for around six months before she did get clean again. And like I said, Paris did not take this well at all. He felt deeply betrayed by his mom because of her relapse. And I think this was a bit of a turning point for Paris. He no longer trusted his mom at all. And I don't wanna say that he hated his mom at this point, but he was definitely expressing that he did. And he definitely was expressing some anger issues. And Paris's behavior just overall just got a lot darker. And after Charity did get clean after the six months, the family did move around a lot, which was very disruptive for Paris. And they all eventually moved back in with Charity's mother, Kyla obviously Paris and Ella's grandmother back on that big fancy ranch. And Charity moved back in with her mom just while she got back on her feet. But to be honest, this probably made the whole situation worse. Kyla and Charity still had an extremely strained relationship and them just all living together, just on top of each other, it soon descended into chaos. There was just so much tension in the air. It must have been such a toxic environment to live in for everyone. And this is when Paris really started to act out. And there was one incident in particular that just really shocked and scared everyone. And it all started with Paris and Ella playing together and Paris ended up breaking one of Ella's toys. Now, I'm not sure if he broke it on purpose or just accidentally, because things can happen, but Ella was very upset about her broken toy. So Charity shouted at Paris and punished him. And in response to this, Paris picked up a kitchen knife and started waving it around and then ran out of the house with this knife. Charity and Kyla chased after him, but then he started waving the knife around at both of them. But between them, they did manage to pin Paris down and get the knife off of him. But this incident just really shook Charity. Like she'd never seen this kind of behavior from Paris before. She was just like, what the hell is Paris thinking? Like, he, it's not normal for a child to run and grab a kitchen knife, you know? So Charity ended up checking Paris into a psychiatric hospital because of this incident. And Paris stayed at this hospital for around a week before Charity discharged him. And when Charity discharged Paris, nothing was really said to Charity. There was no like report given to her or anything like that. And the hospital kind of just said like, 
everything's fine. However, it was later found that there was a file written up about Paris that was never given to charity. And it said that Paris was, quote, obsessed with shooting and killing, as well as having homicidal and suicidal ideation. Now, side note, Kyla, the grandmother, seems to think that Charity was aware of this file, which we don't know. Um, Charity says that she wasn't aware of this file. Kyla said that she was. But to be honest, it's not unusual for Kyla and Charity to disagree with each other and sling mud at the other one. Their relationship is very strained and they don't really trust each other. And the situation with the knife wasn't the only situation that was of concern about Paris. Paris would repeatedly bang his head against the wall until it would bleed. There's also footage of Paris making quite threatening and aggressive gestures towards Ella. And ugh, I don't quite know what to make of this because obviously knowing what I know now, it's very concerning, very worrying. But at the time, I feel like it would be quite easy to play off as Paris just messing around. It's really easy in hindsight to be like, yeah, that was the point, that's the worrying bit. But yeah, it's always different, isn't it, when you're actually in the moment. So jumping to 2007, Paris is 13 and Ella is four. And after moving around a lot and after living at the grandmother's house, the family settle in Abilene, Texas, which side note has the most churches per capita in the world. So yeah, pretty religious community. And this is where the tragic events of this case take place. So it is February 4th, 2007. It was actually Super Bowl weekend and Charity was working late at a bar and Paris and Ella were just at home with a nanny. So while Charity is working, the nanny is looking after Paris and Ella and she takes them out for food. Then when they come back, they watch Alice in Wonderland. Then after watching Alice in Wonderland, the nanny puts Ella to bed and then Paris goes to his room uh, to do homework Thing. And then not long after this, around 10 p.m., Paris goes to the nanny and convinces the nanny to leave. And the nanny seems to like agree with Paris. She's like, okay, I'll leave. Now, I don't know if this was like a prearranged decision. Um, I can't imagine it was, but uh, yeah, the nanny leaves and she just leaves Ella and Paris in the house on their own. So it's just Paris and Ella in the house. And this is when Paris goes to the kitchen and takes a kitchen knife. Paris goes to Ella's room while Ella is sleeping and he goes on to stab Ella a total number of 17 times, which did prove to be fatal. And what does Paris do straight after the murder? He phones his friend. I know he's 13 and I know he's like processing things in like a different way to an adult, but he phones his friend to tell his friend that he's hurt his sister. And it's not exactly a short phone call either. This phone call to his friend lasts six minutes, which is quite a long phone call in the grand scheme of things. I mean, he's just murdered his sister. Six minutes is a very, very long time. So after Paris speaks to his friend for six minutes, he then does phone 911. Abilene 911. Hello? Abilene 911, go ahead. I, 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 actually, I accidentally killed somebody. You think you killed somebody? No, I know I did. I woke up and I was hallucinating. You were hallucinating? And yes, and I thought my sister was a demon and I killed her. I want you to start CPR, okay? And no, her... I know for a fact that she's dead because well, I... Do you want to go ahead and try? It might still help, okay? No, I, I don't think it'll help because... Come on, Paris, work with me. I want you to put your hands on her chest Mm -hmm. Okay, and I want you to push 30 times. I want you to count. One, two, three, four, five, six. Paris? Seven. He put it down. Now, Paris does sound very distressed on this 911 call. And he's saying some pretty shocking things. He said that he was hallucinating and that he thought his sister was a demon and that is why he killed her. So the operator asks Paris to perform CPR and Paris is quite reluctant to actually do this. He goes on to say that there's no point. I know she's already dead. But after the operator does press Paris, he does agree to perform a CPR. And you can actually hear him on the phone call counting as if he's performing CPR. However, when the police eventually do arrive to the scene, they could tell that CPR hadn't been performed on Ella. And it was clear that Paris was just pretending to perform CPR, which is just sick. There has been so many times in this case where I have forgotten 
that Paris is only 13 at this point. I can't even wrap my head around it. He's pretending to perform CPR. He's even counting. And what he was actually doing, he was just pacing back and forth. That whole 911 phone call was a complete act. Charity has even said that Paris's tears on that phone call were fake because she knows what Paris sounds like when he's actually crying and he doesn't sound like that. Um, but anyway, going back to the scene, uh, the police do arrest Paris. And it's at this point that they need to inform Charity of what has happened, which I can't even imagine having to tell somebody this. Like, how do you tell somebody this? So the police go to the bar that Charity was working at and they tell her that Ella has been hurt. So then Charity is kind of like freaking out because she thinks that Ella's hurt and she keeps repeatedly saying, take me to Ella, take me to Ella. And it is at this point that the police tell her that she has tragically passed away. Oh my God, I can't. I can't even imagine what must have been going through Charity's mind at this point. I mean, I assume, I don't want to speak for her, but I assume her mind probably went towards an accident like a tragic accident had happened, something to do with the babysitter, I don't know, but I just can't imagine that her mind went straight to Paris. So because Paris has been taken into custody now, Charity believes the story that Paris has said that he thought that his sister was a demon and that's why he killed her. I mean, Charity has been put in a completely unimaginable situation. Of course, she's going to believe Paris. She's going to want to believe that this was an accident. I mean, no parent would want to believe that their child did something like this on purpose. So when the police interview Paris, he gives the same story about his sister being a demon and that's why he killed her. However, he does give a slightly different version of events. He said that he was sleeping next to Ella, which was new information. And then he also said that he woke up terrified. He looked over to Ella and she was a demon covered in flames and was laughing at him. And this is what provoked Paris to kill her. However, the police are just not believing Paris and this story that he's giving. They could just tell that he was lying. Paris kept attempting to cry, but no tears were coming. And obviously the police already knew that Paris had lied about giving CPR. So the police are just really not believing Paris. I mean, everything that Paris is doing right now just seems like an act. And then the autopsy reports did come back and it showed that Ella had not only been stabbed 17 times, she was also beaten and strangled. And it also shows something much more disturbing. Paris's semen was found on Ella's bed and also in the shorts that Paris was wearing at the time. It was then discovered that Paris had been watching very explicit hardcore porn and even searching for snuff films, which I didn't know what snuff films were. I had to look it up um, and I didn't look too far as soon as I figured out what it was, but it's basically like extreme porn that also includes murder. I didn't even know things like that existed. Um, but this is what Paris was watching in the hours leading up to Ella's murder. And when Charity found this out, she was absolutely horrified. This was just the final straw for Charity. I think she'd already been kind of having doubts about Paris and his story because he did keep changing little details. So this was just the final straw and Charity did confront Paris about this. So Charity goes to confront Paris and she just comes straight out with it. She says, I know you did this on purpose. I know you're lying. And Paris just went quiet. Charity could see just the shift in her son's behavior. It was like the mask had started to slip. Charity has said that it was like a different person was taking over her son. And Paris just looked up at her after being silent. He just looked straight in her face and said, quote, well, it took you fucking long enough. I mean, I can't, I can't even imagine. That must have been terrifying just to see that shift in behavior and just to see that. And then after this, Charity did confront Paris about the semen found and Paris did not like being confronted about this at all. He actually lost it. He lost it that much that he ended up flipping the table punching a wall and then walking off. I mean, oh my God, I can't. So six months after the murder, the case was heard in juvenile court and the prosecution wanted to lock Paris up for as long as possible. And the trial didn't really get into motive of like why Paris did what he did or getting into anything like that. As far as the prosecution were concerned, they had a confession, they had the killer. It was a pretty black and white clear cut case. They didn't really care. Paris did plead guilty to the murder and he did receive a full 40 year prison sentence, which was the maximum that he could have gotten because he was only 13 at the time. Like it really is hard to remember that he was only 13. But he did get the maximum, but if he was an adult and committed this crime, 
he probably would have gotten the death penalty. So Paris didn't really open up in the first few years that he was in prison. And he also refused visits from his mom. I know, he refused his mom's visits, like, oh my God, you've just killed your sister and now you're refusing to let your mom come and visit you? <laughs> I mean, to be honest, he should be thankful and he's lucky that his mom still wants to visit him. Paris would only communicate with people in the prison through letters and drawings. And there was a few incidents that included violence. Like there was this one incident that Paris just repeatedly punched this other boy who didn't even fight back. Like he just was punching this boy. Paris did undergo quite a few psychological evaluations and it was deemed that Paris had pathological narcissism, which is no surprise to me, as well as all of the traits for a psychopath. Now Paris did eventually start accepting visits from his mom and as you can imagine, their relationship was pretty strained. I mean, of course it was. And Paris continued to torment his mom, even though he was in prison. And this is when Paris confessed to charity the reason to why he killed Ella. And he said it was to punish his mom because she relapsed. Paris said that he knew exactly how to hurt charity the most. And that was by taking both of her children away from her. Paris was under absolutely no illusion that by killing Ella, he would spend most, if not the rest of his life in prison. But this didn't faze Paris, like he didn't care. He was willing to do this just to punish his mom so much to take away both of her children in one fell swoop. Again, I just wanna stress, he was 13 when he was making decisions like this. After Paris confessed this, Charity came so close to cutting off Paris altogether, but she just couldn't bring herself to do it. I mean, I feel like we need to remember here that Paris is still her son. And it's just such a difficult, unimaginable situation that Charity has been put in. And like I said, Paris continues on to torment his mom. His story does change quite a few times. He reveals information ever so slowly. It's like he's just dangling this carrot in front of his mom and he's just holding back certain pieces of information just to just to torture her even more. So initially he has always denied that there was any sexual motive behind the murder. And regarding all of the graphic porn and everything that he was watching before the murder, he said that he wasn't actually watching it. He just put it on so it would show up in the history and his mom would find out about it eventually and it would make her mad. I, I don't buy that, I really don't. I mean, you're planning to kill your sister. I think you've achieved making your mom mad. I don't think you need to do anything more to make her more mad. I don't buy that he almost planted it there just to make her mad and he wasn't watching it. I don't buy it. After this, later on, somewhere down the line, I'm not exactly sure when, but he did admit that there was a sexual motive behind the murder. Paris actually confessed that he was sexually abusing Ella on that night of the murder and that he killed Ella to cover this up so Ella couldn't tell anyone. And I don't know if this is true. We never know. Paris constantly changes his story. It's just another form of torture, isn't it? He's not telling Charity exactly what happened. And Charity, that's all she wants to know, you know? You can't turn back time. Uh, she just wants to know exactly why he did this and he's not telling her. He keeps changing his story, which is disgusting. And not only is Paris tormenting Charity by changing his story constantly, he also physically attacked her one time where she was visiting. He flipped the table again. Paris seems to like flipping tables and he pinned Charity up against the wall, choking her and cutting off her air supply. And Charity literally thought in that moment that he was going to kill her. He eventually did ease off though and let her go, but it was in this exact moment that Charity thought he's still a threat here. Like it's very possible that when he's released, he is going to kill me. And over the last few years, Paris has definitely not shied away from all of the public attention and fascination surrounding him. I think he kind of likes it. As I said in the beginning of the video, he did do an interview with Piers Morgan. And you can just really see how cold and how calculating Paris really is. Like I said, I know that there are people out there that are cold and callous and calculating, but oh my God, it's so rare for them to be like Paris. But if you can, definitely try and watch that interview. It's really interesting. It's not the most insightful. Piers Morgan definitely goes very easy on Paris. He doesn't really press him too much on the really serious topics. 
And um, I mean, it is Piers Morgan, what do we expect? Paris even has a profile on writerprisoner.com. I didn't even know that was a thing, but basically it's where prisoners almost advertise themselves for the public to write them letters. And Paris advertises himself on there and wow, is his profile arrogant. In his profile, he talks about how unique he is. I mean, yeah, Paris, you kind of are unique, but it's, it's not a good thing. And he also says how enriching the conversations will be for the other person. Wow, the narcissism. He also says, quote, the sorting hat didn't dither before tossing me into Slytherin. Uh, <laughs> Channeling his inner Tom Riddle there. Okay, we need to kind of go back in time now. I'm sorry if this confuses uh, the story, but there is some detail about the grandmother, Kyla, that I need to include. And I didn't know where to include it like earlier on in the story without it distracting too much from the background of Paris and Charity. So you could say that Paris isn't the only murderer in the family. So as we know, Charity's father was murdered when Charity was six years old. However, what I didn't get a chance to say at the time was that Charity knows exactly who murdered her father. And she's so certain about who murdered her father because she knows this person extremely well. And who is that? Her mother, Kyla. I know, I mean, <laughs> When I was watching this documentary, this is where I found this out. My jaw literally hit the ground. I was like, what, are you being serious? So Charity has not only gone through her firstborn son murdering her four-year-old daughter, she also went through her mother murdering her father. Kyla was charged with this murder. Um, well, she was actually charged with hiring someone to murder her husband. Um, she didn't do it herself. I do wanna stress that the jury did find her not guilty of this murder. But like I said, in this documentary that I was watching, she practically admits to the murder. Up until Charity was 12 years old, she was the most wonderful, loving child that anyone could wish for. We were inseparable. And then from 12 on, it's been, it's like an alcoholic, it's up and down. She was a good manipulator. But we all are, Paris is. Ella was. I would be lying to you if I said that I wasn't. We all manipulate each other. We're all spoiled rotten. My other daughter, Kayla, I don't think she's quite as good. She didn't have as good a teacher because I don't do it so much anymore. I don't have a company to manipulate. I don't have drivers to manipulate. I don't have a jury to manipulate. So... It's like, no wonder Charity thinks her mom's guilty. I mean, I think her mom's guilty. What the hell? She seems so smug about the whole situation. Oh my God, I don't have a jury to manipulate. And it's that look, that look that she gives the camera. And she's just like, oh my God, I don't care. She basically admitted that she murdered her husband right there and then in that look. So Charity said that her mom murdered her father for the money. Like I said, they were very wealthy. So Charity's mom and dad had been separated for a very long time, but then they got remarried. And 57 hours after they got remarried, her father was murdered. 57 hours. <laughs> wow, could it be more obvious? Okay, so going back to the story now, but you can understand why I needed to include that. I mean, <laughs> murder runs in the family. So six years after the murder of Ella, Charity did fall pregnant again, and she gave birth to a son named Phoenix. And Paris does actually have somewhat of a relationship with his brother. Paris writes letters to Phoenix, and these letters are being put into a box for Phoenix to read when he's old enough to understand. And I know what you're thinking. You're probably thinking, why the hell is Charity allowing Paris and Phoenix to have a relationship? And Charity justifies this relationship because she wants to teach Phoenix what unconditional love looks like, which I do completely get, like I understand that. But I just wonder what Phoenix is gonna think and feel about the whole situation, like when he's old enough to understand what exactly has happened. And Paris has said that he loves Phoenix, but this is coming from somebody that doesn't 
know love, doesn't recognize love, can't describe love. And I just don't know if Paris is capable of love. Like I don't believe him. I don't believe that he loves Phoenix. I believe that maybe he wants to love Phoenix, but yeah, I just don't know if Paris is capable of love. I don't know. And obviously Charity's biggest concern now is her son, Phoenix, and the risk that Paris poses to Phoenix. Paris has said openly that when he's released, he will kill his mom. And I just wanna stress that he is eligible for parole in 2027, which is not that far away. I mean, I don't think he'll get out in 2027, but still, I mean, he could do. I don't think he will, but he could do. Many people have told Charity that she needs to stop spending money on going to see Paris, and she actually needs to save money to change her identity and move so Paris can't find her in Phoenix when he gets out. Now, Charity does realize the risk that Paris poses to Phoenix, and she has said that if it comes down to it, she will choose Phoenix, she will move away, and she will cut all ties with Paris because she will have to make that decision one day. Like, Paris, is going to be released. I think right now she's just trying to have as much time as possible with Paris because she knows that time is limited. And it's not for us to judge Charity. Like I did see quite a lot of judgment online about the fact that she has stayed in contact with Paris and it's not for us to judge. Like we don't know what it's like to be in that situation. And the way I see it, it's like she has almost lost two children. She hasn't just lost Ella, she has lost Paris as well. And even though Paris is still alive, she is almost mourning him. I mean, I don't want to speak for her, I don't, but that's kind of how I see it. She is mourning Paris because she's lost the son that she thought she had. And I can almost understand, you know, Paris is one of the last few connections that Charity still has with Ella. I know that sounds weird, but it's like Paris and Ella were so close. There are so many happy memories that Charity must have that are Paris and Ella together. And by keeping Paris in her life, she still has that connection. I don't know, like I said, I don't wanna speak for her. Now, since Ella's murder, Charity has worked to spread the message and spread awareness of her situation to try and prevent something like this happening to others. She also set up the Ella Foundation, which I will leave links to down below, of course. It aims to prevent violence and also support those impacted by violence. Charity is now a public speaker and she helps to counsel the families of both murder victims and murderers. Now, Ella's favorite color was purple and Charity painted her whole house purple and she decorated all of the inside in purple as well and this is something that Ella wanted she wanted everything purple it was her favorite color um, but this is something that the family never got around to doing before she was tragically lost and I've said it multiple times in this video but I just I can't imagine the pain that Charity has gone through the strength that she has to carry on like when the trial and the investigation was happening she was having to have meetings with both the prosecution and the defense. It's just so heartbreaking. It's so messed up. It's so tragic. Like I said, this is such a horrible, tragic story. So I suppose the question is, is Paris a true psychopath? Well, you can't actually be diagnosed as a psychopath. You can be diagnosed with a personality disorder and in that is kind of like psychopathic traits. But like I said, there are certain traits that someone can have where they fit into the profile of a psychopath. It's all very confusing, it really is. Like I even studied psychopathy at uni and <laughs> It still confuses me now. And it's also kind of a spectrum as well. Like just because you have these traits, it doesn't mean that you are a psychopath either. But if we're strictly speaking about Paris, oh boy, does he fit into these traits? I would definitely say he is high up on the spectrum. So I don't know, you tell me, do you think that Paris fits the profile of a true psychopath? So let's run through some of the traits of a psychopath. Callous, unemotional, pathological liar, a manipulator, superficial charm, which basically means that there's no sensitivity behind that charm and there's no depth behind it either, lack of empathy, lack of remorse, and an unrealistic sense of superiority. I always struggle to say that word, superiority. Um, so let me know, do you think that Paris fits the traits of a true psychopath? Because I feel like we can tick every single one of them off. But Paris says that he is no longer a threat. He is no longer a threat to his mom, to his brother, or to anyone in the public. He says that he is cured and that he is ready to be released. But this is such a classic trait of a psychopath. 
They are experts at lying, and I mean experts. They are so good at manipulating every single person around them, including professionals. And that's what makes them so scary because they are so good at this. Paris is a psychopath. He cannot be cured. I need to stress that you cannot cure psychopathy. It can be managed, but it can't be cured. And on top of Paris being an expert liar and an expert manipulator, he's also a genius. Just in case you've forgotten, he has an IQ of 141 and that was when he was age 13. So I don't know if he can go up, I don't know, but that's what makes him so terrifying. And I don't know if I've managed to get across just how dangerous Paris is in this video, but trust me, he is dangerous. He is a danger to his mom. He's a danger to Phoenix. He is a danger to pretty much every single person that he comes in contact with. He is so dangerous that when his mom or anyone goes to visit him in prison, they actually can't sit at a table with him. They have to like speak to him through this like glass, like this thing. Can't really explain it. I'll put a picture up on the screen. So will Paris be released on parole in 2027? Like I said in the video, I don't think he will. He will only be aged 33 in 2027. So still incredibly young. But like I said, I don't think he will get out. But but regardless of how his parole goes in 2027 and any other parole after that, he will be released on the 4th of February, 2047. Paris is going to be released at some point in the future. And if he does serve his whole term, he will be aged 53 when he gets out. And I just sincerely hope that when Paris does get released, that obviously he can't be cured. Uh, but I hope that his condition is managed. I mean, I just hope for the sake of everyone, Charity especially, and Phoenix, of course, but I think Charity is probably at most risk of being murdered by Paris. I just hope for the sake of everyone that Paris is right and he is no longer a threat. But right now, with the way he is, I think he is still a threat. I think he is a threat to every single person. But by the time he gets released, I hope he's not. So that is the end of the case of Paris Bennett, which is such a horrible, tragic story that ended in a loss of life that was taken way too soon. And it's just such a heartbreaking story for everyone. It's horrible. And I just hope that Charity is okay. I hope that Phoenix is okay. I just don't know how Charity was able to cope with all of this and carry on. I just think she is such a strong woman. I have so much respect for her. As always, please leave me your thoughts, opinions, theories on this case down below, but please keep it respectful. And also don't forget to let me know what cases you want me to cover next because I always want to know what you want to hear. And that is it from me and I'll see you in my next video. Bye.